Coming next, The Music Chronicles. The Music Chronicles is brought to you by Cop Audio Services, contemporary and old school productions. Visit copaudioserve.com. This is an average smartphone. A few decades ago, could you believe that this little device would allow you to produce a professional song to upload in platforms like Spotify, Deezer and YouTube Music? Frankly, technology has come a long way since their humble beginnings. In this episode of the Music Chronicles, we are going to present the evolution of the computer music. Welcome to the Music Chronicles, I'm Leo Gollart. Today we have so many alternatives of electronic resources that sometimes we take some features for granted. But in the beginning, musicians had to be very creative, handling the lack of these features. Does the limitation of technology make a better musician, since he's able to explore his creativity, overcoming the harder and softer limitations, or in the proper hands, all the resources can be combined, creating unexplored sounds and a higher quality music? This is what we are going to see in this episode. But first, if you are new to the COP TV channel, please subscribe and hit the like button so it can help us to hit 1k sub. The Music Chronicles starts now. Computer music has come a long way since its humble beginnings. Before the first computer music program in the 1950s, music was restricted to only one method of production, the classical method, a man, an idea, and limited resources. This way, Music was produced and performed using traditional instruments such as strings, percussion, wind, keyboards, and ethnic instruments. Composers would write music scores by hand, and musicians would play the music live or record it using analog recording devices. Sometimes, musicians had to overcome their skills in order to compensate for the lack of resources. In all the history of humanity, creativity always had a crucial role in stimulating new ideas, and with it, the most variated solutions. In another field, music can now be produced entirely by electronics. No known instruments are involved. Coded information is punched out. An electronic music synthesizer does the rest. This is music with a strictly electronic beat. In the 1950s, the first computer music programs were developed, but they were still very limited in terms of what they could do. However, nothing stands before creativity. In the 1960s, a new sensation was about to emerge, changing once and for all the scenario of music production through electronic devices. In the 1960s electronic synthesizers were developed, allowing musicians to create new sounds and experiment with different sonic possibilities. It was a tendency that came to stay. After the evolution of microchips in the 1970s, synthesizers had a notorious evolution. In addition to that fact, they became more popular, which made a perfect bridge for the radical evolution of computer music in the next decade. In the late 1950s, Max Matthews discovered how a computer could be used as a musical instrument. Working at AT&T's Bell Laboratories, he realized that the same programs he was using to study telephones could be used to make music. Truly one of the fathers of computer music, Max has helped to set up such world-renowned electronic music laboratories as Karma at Stanford University and IRCOM at the Pompidou Center in Paris. In this piece, this is a, uh, a selection from the Queen of the Night. Uh, and the important thing to remember in listening to this piece is that the soprano is a computer. That piece was synthesized in 1982 at IRCOM by uh, Xavier Rodet, 
and uh, you can see how far uh, computer music has come in 20 years uh, in terms of how much better the sounds are and uh, how much more interesting things like human voices we can now synthesize on the computer. In the 1980s, the rise of personal computers and digital audio workstations, DAWs, made it easier for musicians to create and manipulate music on their own. Computer music was massively associated with video games. A console like the Nintendo Entertainment System or Famicom, Family Computer, released in 1983 is easily the first image to emerge in most people's heads mentioning computer music. 1983 was also an important year because, from that year on, machines started being able to communicate among themselves. It was the emerging MIDI technology. The music interface for digital instruments made synthesizers and computer work together. In the early 1990s, computers were no longer scary terminals with black screens and a lot of complex commands to run. Graphical interfaces allowed people to execute thousands of lines in codes with a single click on an icon. Today, music production software is more advanced than ever, with features such as virtual instruments, sample libraries, and sophisticated mixing and mastering tools. In the world of electronic dance music, DJs use computers and software to mix and remix tracks, often in real-time during live performances. Advancements in artificial intelligence have even led to the development of software that can generate music on its own, with varying degrees of human input. And new ways of interacting with computers, such as gesture control devices, are opening new possibilities for creating and performing music. As technology continues to evolve, we can expect even more exciting developments in the world of computer music. Thanks for watching.